So we're in the east pivot. This is on the north side of the pivot road. We're looking at 32,000 uh, plants per acre corn. What I want to show here is some comparisons we're looking at in relation to bubblers on a pivot, uh, narrow spacing versus our subsurface drip. And what you can see already is when you look, there's a little bit less uh, stubble on the ground compared to the drip. You can see two years ago corn, you can see last year's cotton, you can see some uh, weed pressure, which you don't see at all in the drip. This is something that uh, obviously we've, we've addressed with, with chemical applications, uh, with herbicides, but this is dramatically minimized in uh, the drip. You can also see some volunteer cotton coming back because although it is outside of the new seed row because we moved over to plant, it received adequate water that it was able to volunteer. All of these things are some of the contributors to try to uh, determine the differences, cost-benefit ratios between drip and pivots. In this case, there's some more management that has to go into taking care of our, our water extraction and the value of our soil moisture uh, being preserved in a pivot versus drip. You can also tell you start to dig down here. Again, this is drier on the surface because the irrigation isn't coming. Uh, it's due here today. But you can see there's some signatures of where water has uh, left from the soil surface, where there's some fissures that open up that deeper soil moisture can be evaporated. Um, it's just all part of that comparison between a pivot and a drip. I think on these bubblers we're very similar in terms of efficiencies, but if we're getting right down to the, uh, the quick of the differences, this is really where the difference lies is this, this management of the soil surface and that uh, surface to atmosphere interface. Okay, so this is typical uh, spray drops in, in a uh, corn pivot. Some things I want to compare here or note is when the spray is under canopy, you're protecting a lot of this water. And so you can see the water's puddling, the water's pooling, it's concentrating. That's uh, pretty standard. So you're not getting a huge benefit from this point in the season on with bubblers versus spray. Although, uh, early in the season when you don't have much cover, you certainly would get the benefit of having bubblers and getting more of that water directly to the ground. Uh, some things that I do want to point out, if we were to compare, say, a drip system versus this pivot system, you can see that this front leading uh, nozzle and drop is hung up in corn. Uh, corn's strong enough and tall enough, it's going to do that every time. What often will happen is that this drop will be stretched and it'll pull, 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 be watered in the same spot until it comes free. And then it's going to skip a couple of feet and it's going to nominally be here. Those little bit of um, differences in uniformity, they can really add up in yield. One of the, the old timer saying is that uniformity is where your yield lies in corn. And I certainly think we, we see that out. Over the course of the season, some things to do to increase your uniformity is uh, continue to do laps through the sprinkler, certainly. It's not gonna hang up on the same plant every time. Also look at your diurnal differences. Make sure that you're not at the same spot in the field um, every day, but make sure that you're offset a little bit. So if it hits it at one spot at noon, the next time maybe it hits it at midnight and you can have that type of transition. Um, also looking back at the field and the water storage here, if we were to have more cover, uh, if this was following a corn crop, say, or a wheat crop, we'd be protecting a lot more of this water. But as you can see clearly from the reflection on the water, the sunlight is hitting this water. We will be losing a good portion of it to evaporation, although there may be some very slight side benefits to canopy cooling with evaporation. We really want to drive the plant's growth through preferential transpiration, which means that water is coming up through the plant's root structure all the way through its leaf performing all of the major functions in the plant and then being able to be regulated through the stomates of the plant to cool or warm the plant according to what its exact respirative and, and photosynthetic needs are at that time.